Well, you know, something else that a lot of people were really talking about a lot at following uh, the Dark Side of the Ring, uh, I saw it all over social media, was uh, what had happened between you and Buzz Sawyer, uh, him skipping town with the money from your grandfather. Uh, what can you tell us about your future interactions with Buzz as you continue to work with him following all that? Well, I mean, obviously, I, I drove 3,000 miles to find him and, uh, and, and have a face-to-face with him. And my intent wasn't to go there and uh, have a physical confrontation, but I was certainly prepared for it to be that if that's what it turned into. Mm-hmm. And uh, but it didn't. And uh, you know he he's he still it wasn't the way I'm sure he envisioned any of it was going to play out. But he ended up being the one to open the door. And I, I worked out in a in a ring in Portland with him, his little brother. I, I'm not sure his little brother was there or not, but. But Princess Victoria, a female wrestler, and I worked out in the ring with them for about two hours and just learned the very basics. And the very next night, I wrestled Buzz on TV, and uh, and he had told he had told the promoter Don Owens that I had been working for Bill, but they didn't talk evidently back then because I hadn't worked for anybody. I'd never been in the ring, but that one day for two hours, and I got booked every day. Then, then on out for as long as I was there. So, you know, he kind of started off on the wrong foot and certainly uh, did not do the right thing right out of the gate. But really, it's without Buzz Sawyer, uh, who knows where your career could have ended up. Oh, absolutely. And, and I knew that it was, I knew I had to go learn the ropes. I didn't want to, I didn't want to start out in what was then mid-Atlantic and, and just be, you know, somebody aspiring climbing the ladder. When I came home, I wanted to be, I wanted to have achieved the main event status uh, in, in the industry. So my my thought process from the get go was to go somewhere and and learn the trade and learn the craft. But I didn't have any idea I'd drive all the way coast to coast to, to do it. Man, that's that's what they call passion. <laughs> I don't know a lot of people willing to do that. Well, it's it's uh, it's a sacrificial business to begin with. You you give up of yourself a lot of things that people take for granted about things they can do with their time and spend with their families and, and whatnot. You end up, you're married to the business. Anyway, look at it. You know, we were going seven days a week. We're on the road sometimes 60 and 90 days at a time. Oof. And uh, it, it was, uh, it was, it, it was a situation where you, you grew to dis- despise the travel, but you love the performance part of it so much and enjoyed that time in the ring and being able to, to, uh, you know, be awarded or and rewarded by the, the fans that them reciprocating, enjoying what you did. It was like, it was like a, almost like a euphoric drug kind of thing. If you stand in the middle of a ring and 10, 20,000 people out there screaming so loud, you can't even hear anything. It, it turns silent. It's so loud that uh, there's nothing I've ever been able to do in my life that's replicated what that experience was like. So I, I know why Flair and these guys that were you know able to perform way past their, their physical prime couldn't hang it up because they, they didn't know what else to do. And there was nothing to replace that with. 